Morning, everyone. It's Aidan Clifford here, your Microsoft Business <laughs> business Manager for Modern Workplace and Security here at PAX 8 um, for another edition of Modern Workmates. Um, today's a really great edition. I'm actually joined by uh, the prolific uh, Phil Meyer from Microsoft. So uh, I've had the privilege of working with Phil for quite a few years across a few different organisations, which has been, been awesome. But uh, yeah, welcome, Phil. Great to see you. It's good to see you too. And it's also over those years we've been following the the triumphs and the tribulations of the swans. <laughs> <laughs> there have definitely been some ups and downs, but <laughs> largely work-wise, it's always been ups, which has been, a, been pretty cool. Um, yeah, it's a great great time for you to catch up. We've uh, we've recently had Inspire, which prompted um, my reason to catch up and want to uh, put this recording together with you. Um, it's if Anyone in the industry, it's been very hard to ignore that it's just been very AI-focused. There's been a lot of, uh, lot of announcements in that space, particularly at Inspire recently. We had uh, the announcements around Pricing and some more details around N365 Copilot, um, chat being enterprise being uh, being released into uh, the uh, the business standard and above licenses. Um, there's been a lot to process, and I think a, a lot of the people in the uh, in the marketplace are, are, are taking a lot on board, but they're also still needing some uh, demystification around what does it all mean and and where does it all go from here. So um, yeah, I just really want to get what was your take on uh, sort of from that Inspire period and where we're we going from here around uh, the AI announcements from Microsoft. Well, first of all, I have to totally agree. Everything is being very focused around AI over the last months. Um, and, you know, with the announcement around our partnership with OpenAI it goes back to November last year, but there was a lot of discussions prior to that. And a lot of the work that you'll see manifest in the co-pilots is actually work that was started even before that official announcement. Yes, there was some amazing announcement inspired around uh, AI, not just in, as you've mentioned, the Bing chat, Enterprise as being part of that business standard, business premium E3, E5. And if anybody who's on the call is wondering, well, what are you talking about being Chat Enterprise? I'm sure you've all used Chat GPT, right? You, I, I think if, if I've been in a room full of hundreds of people and asked who's used Chat GPT, everybody hands go up, right? So you get that experience. Well, being Chat Enterprise is about bringing trust to a similar experience, the ability to ask any question. But in this case, your question is kept private. Your results or anything you feed in is retained with inside your workspace rather than being shared with the world. And I, and I won't go into the short amount of time now, but there have been some horror stories. Samsung, counselors doing queries, business plans being posted into ChatGPT that a competitor that then picks up. Being Chap Enterprise, that doesn't happen. It's all railed, it's a guard railed and it's safe and it doesn't have any discrimination, it doesn't have any hallucination. That sort of stuff happens when you use the Bing chat enterprise, which you get for nothing. How good's that? It's part of the standard business premium three five. And then there's the co-pilots, which really just take away that drudgery. There's a really good piece that was done, uh, our workplace, uh, will AI fix work? That piece does a really good job of talking about the challenges facing organizations today in innovation by using Microsoft 365. You go, but no, Microsoft 365 is great. PowerPoint, it's easy to draw things, Word is easy. When you think about it, it could be easier. Often what we're doing is we're translating Word documents into PowerPoint presentations or adjusting something. Wouldn't it be cool if you just said, hey, PowerPoint, take that Word document that I sent a client as a proposal and turn it into a 10 slide deck. And give me the speaker notes. Hey, Excel, I've got all these rows and rows of transactions. Tell me what the insights are and remove the anomalies. Oh, and turn that into a graph that I can present to my manager. So there's significant hours that can be saved. So do have a look. And I think, Aidan, you're going to post a link to that Will AI Fix Work, the Work Trend Index findings, where that was highlighted. But as much as you, as our partners, gratefully do with our technologies, to take them to the customers to increase productivity. There's another layer again, which can be realized. And that realization really became profound the other day when Tech Council of Australia, we showed them Copilot and what it was possible to do and produced an Australia specific report in the stages of low adoption, mid adoption and high adoption. And again, Aiden, I'm gonna put it on you, mate. If you can <laughs> put a link to that report, which talked about the 44% increases in productivity by staff by adopting these co-pilot technologies. Look, I'll stop there because there are so many other announcements that you can see from Inspire. 
And so um, maybe I think I've shared with you also another link, a third link, which is the heroes announcement, aka.ms slash hero2023, which goes through many, many things related to not just AI, but security and Azure infrastructure and some cool stuff coming to Power Platform, process mining. Stop me now. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, might just stop you. And th uh, thanks very much for providing those details, I think. Um, and I will be sharing the links that Phil shared with me um, when I post this up on LinkedIn and in the comments. Um, I think I'll put it up on YouTube as well. Uh, but you've touched on some great points of there's been a huge adoption in the consumer space amongst chat GPT. Uh, once we then relay that into a business and enterprise example, it then sort of goes against a whole bunch of the hard work that partners have been doing in the cybersecurity space and protecting the customer's information and compliance and uh, all those other uh, challenges that have been faced. It just brings another another um, sort of attack service or, or way to be compromised. Um, if uh, I've also had some great experience using, um, I was using ChatGPT, but I've also used Bing Chat Enterprise to uh, type up some Excel formulas for me, just putting in just real language into this, the problem or the uh, the data I want to access. And I was pretty amazed as to what it was able to put out. So um, transcribing that into the, the co-pilot space or the uh, M365 co-pilot world where it'll do a lot of that work for me in the next step. Um, it, I'm sort of encapsulating the, the, the busyness of this space at the moment, the amount of announcements that are coming out, the amount of functionality that's coming out. If, uh, if a partner's thinking about the customers and in the SMB space and the queries that might start coming through and they've got to start fielding those, where do you think will be the uh, um, sort of the, the early adopters? What do you think they'll be sort of looking to use the technology for, first of all, or, or, or a starting point for our partners to, uh, to dive into, the, uh, into this world? Look, I think a good place for um, the partners to start now would actually be in Teams. Um, what will be a result of us having done this recording is a transcript. And even now we've got available in Teams, Teams Premium, is the recap option, which is brilliant. I used it the other day. I missed a meeting. I really wanted to attend this meeting around AI and health. I uh, was involved in another call. I simply went to that meeting because a transcript was there. I could say recap. And it told me in very short, within a minute of reading, I was able to get a sense of what was covered, what were the highlighted points and what was the key actions that arose from a one hour meeting? And that was a one minute read that I was able to attain that quick recap. Meetings can show up in an inordinate amount of time and there can be a lot of fluff and bubble around it. And if you're busy people, you want to get down to the essence. What was discussed? And what was the action? So I'd say have a, have a look at recaps in teams today to get a sense of how it might play out in a Teams co-pilot experience, which is even more advanced, what would happen in Power, PowerPoint uh, and Excel and et cetera. Um, there are also videos available, and I think I put the link there to the uh, ability, the blog post, which has got all the videos that do demonstrations. And yes, you're right, it's not available today. And yes, you can't get those co-pilots unless you work for an organization, which is our top 500 enterprise customers where it's rolling out at the moment. It's very, it's a very big, very energy consuming, very compute intensive environment. I will say that we've got the compute in Australia already. We have the NV100, the GPUs all set ready to go in Australia. We're not ready to make that doing anything for you in Australia yet because of other, other factors like power. You've got to power yep. these big beasts <laughs> and we want to be green in the way in which we deliver that power. We don't want to burn down the planet. Um, so the rollout's happening. Yeah, I'd say get started by having a look at what's inside Teams. Um, I'd also suggest, we were having a conversation earlier, how does a partner get started to learn how to introduce this to their clients? So I've given the Teams angle, but it is very much as we were talking about adoption and change management. This will be quite a substantial change and flex in the mind of how workers will do their work. They're very excited if you look at the workplace index about what AI can do to increase their productivity. But the how of it is where a partner's opportunity steps in. Let me show you how. And not for free, but potentially for a fee. So you guys as partners can go make money out of them in their hills by having a model, having a proven approach to how to introduce this technology uh, to your customers and how the customers then can induce it to the others. So if you're familiar with adoption change management, it's things like finding champions of change. Um, some of the concepts I've heard from some partners that are in the public domain is creating a cockpit 
on the analogy of co-pilot. <laughs> so a group of people inside the business who are the, running the cockpit and you go and visit them and they show you how to do those prompts, how to do those queries, how those AI accelerators can be achieved inside the business. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll leave it there for the moment. I, I will catch on one point you were talking about around compliance uh, and the concern. Absolutely, I see, I see AI, many people say AI fuels innovation. Absolutely it does. I actually think it also fuels compliance. If you're in a small business and you just release the beast of AI inside, suddenly somebody on reception potentially could put in a query that says, show me the salaries of all the senior management in the organization. So it's really important to set the guardrails and the classification and labeling of documents and files in the business so that the right people get to say the right information from the right place. Yeah. So that yep. sort of stuff, again, is where applying some of the elements that maybe you're less familiar with as a partner that exist in business premium, that exist in E3 around auto classification, labeling, information protection. Maybe it's time now before the availability of Copilot to Get some learning about that, apply that capability about DLP, data loss prevention, et cetera, to set those guardrails in place, even within the client's business, to ensure that the, only the right people can see only the right information. It's kind of, I can't find it because of obscurity today. In a moment, that obscurity is gone, that mist is clear, and AI will be able to find it. So you've got to make sure that they only find the right stuff. I yeah, no, I think that's a, that's a great point. And I think uh, sort of, since 2020 and that mass adoption of uh, of teams and remote working solutions and, and productivity solutions, and now it's playing catch up with the, the cybersecurity to sort of protect um, the environments essentially. We're now at another pivot point where the, the good cop, bad cop has a bit more balance to it of mm -hmm. you need to do the security compliance um, protection in order to protect the previous productivity solutions. But now there's the, the next stage of, here's the, the new set of solutions that you do need to do that for as well. And I think as you're saying, um, through the adoption and change uh, initiatives, people are starting to see both that value a lot faster. Um, you mentioned uh, the hero users within organisations, which I've, he I've heard is a really effective way of uh, making sure that those investments do stay within the business. It doesn't revert back to how you're working previously. But uh, I was also speaking to a partner the other day who, as part of their um, managed service, would do uh, floor walks once a month or once a quarter within the business just to make sure that everyone within the team can see how tangible um, the solutions are. I just put their hand up and just ask honest questions uh, that they may have been keeping to themselves or trying to uh, try, trying to answer through, uh, maybe through Copilot themselves as well. So uh, I think it's, it's very interesting how it's it's escalating from there, but I think it does stem back to, we need to do the, the hard work and set that foundation in order to effectively take advantage of the opportunity in front of us as well. Yeah, look, people have thought about the idea of ChatGPT, which we talked about earlier, being in the, in the wild, wild west and everything's out there in the public domain and it's brilliant. If you're doing holiday planning, you don't care about people knowing you, where you're going on holidays, but you wouldn't want to put a business plan into that kind of world. Okay, so then we bring it into being chat enterprise. Cool, so we do some business planning and we know our company's data is safe. There's another layer there that I've alluded to there. You've got to make sure that individual's data is safe. Business units inside the client is safe. And that's where we turn on those capabilities in business premium and, and so on in the product. And do you, do you think from, um, so just going back to partners adopting the solutions and providing them uh, as a service, um, do you see it being a tr like a traditional service of either a one-time fee or adopting it within to their sort of uh, um, their stacks, their, their bronze, silver, gold stacks of how much they advise and help customers adopt these services or is there a few more or are there a few more dimensions in how you can see uh, partners providing AI as a service into their managed services um, business at the moment just trying to de uh, deconstruct that a little bit more well first of all I really appreciate that you see that opportunity of our partner community to step it up from being transactional to being service oriented whether it's service for one time let's call that professional services or recurring fee let's call that managed services I think it's it's a joy to me to see that Pax8 has got that mentality and that approach to encourage the broader partner community from, I use an analogy, stop being a grocery store, start being a restaurant. You make more profit by and more margin by your services, delivering the plate of food, cooking up the, the components and letting people have a great experience with you. And you deal with all the different vendors and all the different components to put that meal together in an elegant way, tailored, 
to your particular customer community. So I'll start with that. So, OK, we've got the, the, the restaurant analogy. Professional, yes, some of you might decide to go out there and charge a one time fee for the consultancy around adoption and change. But what really came through to me from Inspire, have a look at the keynote, have a look particularly at the sessions by Nicole Denzen, where they talk about the partners now getting around 116 US dollars as a monthly subscription fee from a customer versus that or $20 in US dollar terms for business premium. And you go, wow, that's a six times multiplier on the price. That's low. We're actually seeing some partners at 10 times multiplier, but the example given was 116. And one of the lines in that was AI adoption, not as a one-time fee, but as a recurring. How do we keep educating the users, new users, on how to use these AI capabilities? Obviously, there was security in there. There was teams assessments. There was meeting room reviews. There was network assessments. All those other elements that get on top of the $20 to make the 116. I, I think there's an opportunity for a managed service, a recurring fee. Well, and I guess you we're seeing uh, from the original announcements or from everyone's sort of first exposure to ChatGPT a few months ago to where we are today, the amount of uh, change in that sort of six month period or yearly period, it's only going to become uh, faster and uh, more incremental from here, I imagine as well. So it makes more sense to have that recurring um, the recurring model rather than a fixed time fee because then it's just a moment in time and then it's up to your own devices to uh, to adopt it from there. Yeah, and, and I, I find it really interesting that the, the, why is it that AI has suddenly got this momentum? Uh, and it goes to the point you're raising there about accessibility. Everybody's using ChatGPT. It's because it's so accessible. Yes, it's AI, but AI has been around in Microsoft 365 since 2014. If you look at workplace analytics, as it's now called, or speech to text, or many of the other features, but now it's become something that the consumer can accept. It's a point in time like the first web browsers being made available to users. And everyone, wow, this internet thing. I mean, I'm old enough to remember the 94, 95 sort of time frame when it just changed the world. I'm even old enough to remember word processors coming in, and that changed <laughs> the world from typewriters. So the idea of the PC coming in changed the world from major computer processing. This is one of those defining moments in our, in our history. Accessibility to AI. Well, that's right. And I think some of the, um, the productivity studies that you've mentioned, and we'll be sharing the links after this as well, um, it appears to show that there is that, that moment in time of if you're an early adopter of the, uh, the AI technologies now versus being a technology laggard, the, the, the difference is going to be extremely stark over the next couple of years. It's not going to be a, a 10 year process. It's the next two or three years that you're going to, the, the haves and the have nots are going to be more separate than they, they ever have. And um, especially it seems to be within the economy, it's a, it's a time where productivity gains are a, a few and far between up until sort of this aha moment that the that the industry yes. is having as a um, across the board. Uh, from from sort of there, so, so thanks very much for um, providing Sort of all of the the insights of out of Inspire, but if a partner's looking to get started to increase their education and start to to harness the opportunity in front of them now, um, in addition to reaching out to ourselves here at Pax Eight, where would you suggest partners go to to start um, sort of upskilling in this area? Well, a couple of places I would say. Uh, first, I'll catch a point you made about that increasing productivity. I think you must have read the Tech Council of Australia report that I, uh, I mentioned earlier, and that absolutely shows that low, medium, and high. So maybe you can share that link in the chat. The other one I'd say to get started, uh, so that's good grounding to say, wow, there's a massive opportunity. Wow, this is sort of areas of opportunity that exist. There's a thing we've called EMSON, you know, terrible an acronym there, but, <laughs> but it's a, a Microsoft customer experience model, uh, engagement model. So it's all about listen and consult all the way to realize value. And we've mo mapped out modern work and infrastructure and power platform and security in this five stage model. And maybe you can share the link there because if they go to, I think it's about slide nine or 10 inside there where the Emerson model is painted, and then you go a little bit deeper, you can look at all the solution areas and it takes you with links to, right, I'm now gonna go and engage my customer in a listen consult phase. Here's some Microsoft resources that can help me with that. I'm going to move through the stages of planning. I'm going to move through to the stage of going deployment. I'm going to get to the stage of realizing value. Oh, okay, so here's some things to help me with deploying proof of concepts. Here's some processes that can help me with building out that co-pilot test bed. 
there's some processes then in the final stages how do i optimize all that how do i take them to the next level and another sets of results so i think you can share that link i think i shared that link earlier yep. with you the msum for partners model um and what i conclude with is quite a good session that was done in june um which was all about introducing the whole co-pilot model it was the how the what the why and the when of when co-pilot and it included people like the microsoft mechanics jeremy somebody from our go-to-market team gloria it has included grana who had a whole bunch of demos in it and include one of our leads around microsoft 365 about a whole lot but really well worth a long uh, a watch and if i haven't shared it i'll share you the link to that one as well to share with the community who've joined us today thanks Aiden. Yeah, perfect. No, um, yeah, you've shared all the links with me, so I'll definitely put them in the uh, in the post on LinkedIn. And um, yeah, some great uh, great content to start uh, consuming and just yeah, starting to make an inroads into what the uh, the opportunity is, steam is defying what the what it all means, and yeah, how do we how do we get started? And um, I definitely like the um, the Tech Council of Australia um, report. I think it makes a lot of those uh, impacts and opportunities around AI really tangible uh, and yes. starting to. Just starting to have messages that you can bring to your customers who may not necessarily see where the uh, where the traction comes from. So um, no, no, definitely, uh, definitely share that out. Um, I won't take up too much of your day. I know you're a busy man there, Phil, but uh, yeah. always really appreciate catching up. And um, yeah, would love to would love to catch up again soon. Well, I'm looking forward to it, man. I'm looking forward to uh, having some functions with you and the partners in our lovely office at Denison Street or in other locations around the country. So I look forward to joining you in that. Awesome. Thanks very much, Phil. I'll speak to you soon. See ya. Bye.